Hey hey and welcome back to the next video. Today we're going to get some simple inputs going and see if we can move around some game object. So let's get to it. Start by making an input class. This input class is going to implement key listener, which is part of the AWT package. Now we need to implement these methods. And we have three methods, key typed, key pressed, and key released. Key typed won't really be interesting to us because key pressed will tell us the same thing. So for now, let's just close this up. And to do this as easy as possible, so we have time, we're just going to make a private array of Booleans and call them pressed. And let's make a constructor where we say that pressed is new boolean. And I don't know how many slots I'm going to give it. So these key presses, all of these keys are represented by an int. They're represented by a number. And so we're just going to look at the index of the key pressed and see if it's pressed right now or not. It's going to be more clear when we implement this. So here in key pressed, we're just going to check. Actually, we don't even need to check. At this simple stage, we're just going to say that whatever's at pressed at E, which is the key event that just occurred, get key code that needs to be true. So we've pressed something. It has a key code. Get the slot of our Boolean array and say that this slot now holds true. And do the opposite in key released. It is now false. So all we need now is a public method to read this. So let's say public Boolean is pressed and it takes in a key code, then just return pressed key code. All right, this is our simple input class. That's enough for now. I will, however, start by making an interface that we'll call a controller, and you'll see why in a little bit. My controller, I want it to have four methods for now, which will be a boolean is requesting up. And let's just duplicate that. I press control D is requesting down, is requesting left, is requesting right. All right, so these are the methods that I want my controller to be able to answer for me. So let's make a controller that implements this. Let's call it a player controller. It could have been called a human controller, I guess. Uh, it implements controller. All right. So the way that we're going to find this out, we need an input class. So let's get that input, input and make a constructor that takes the input player controller input input this input is equal to input all right so we take in an input which we store and now we can ask it so if we're requesting up we'll just say input is pressed and then we have key event keeps these as constants vk stands for virtual key and then we'll just say up, which means the up arrow. And in the same way, we can just do the other ones. I'm just gonna paste these in and then say key down, key left, and key right. So this is it for our player controller class. These classes are quite small, but 
Now we need someone who uses it. So let's use our square and actually let's go to refactor, rename, and let's call this player because now we're going to move this object around. So the player now needs to hold a controller. Just say private controller controller. And we need to take that in as well. So public player controller controller. And then first say super. So our size and position is set. And then say this controller equals controller. Awesome. So now we can actually do stuff here in our update method, depending on what our controller is telling us. So if we do this, let's get something called a delta x and an int delta y. I don't know why I did that in, let's do that. Okay, int delta x, int delta y. Now we need to calculate this somehow. So if our controller is requesting up, what does that mean? That means our delta y is going backwards. All right, I need to set an initial value. So let's do that. So the delta is zero. If we do nothing, then there will be no difference. But if we're requesting up, we are going backwards for the y-axis, that is. Let's just, is requesting down. Then we're adding to the y-axis. Is requesting left. Then we are removing from the x-axis. And is requesting right. We are adding to the x-axis. And then we say position get x plus delta x position get y plus delta y. So this should work in all its simplicity. Uh, however, there are still some things we need to do. If we go to our game class, actually, if we, if we first go to our display, so the J frame needs to have the key listener as well. So our controller that we pass to our player needs to have this key listener that we can use and listen to. But so does, does the J frame. The J frame is the one that actually generates the events that are sent into our key listener. So we need to get it in here. So let's just say input input. And let's say add key listener input. Let's go back to our game. So this is now sad because it's expecting an input and the player is expecting a controller that in turn is expecting this input. So let's make that input. I don't know if we need to store it. Let's do it for now. All right, so let's make that input a new input. Let's pass it in here to our display. And the player needs a new, let's say a player controller, which needs the input. Now I think we've tied it all together. Let's see if we missed anything. Let's try it out. <laughs> all right. I. It works, but apparently I did not change. Let's go player, uh, y, y, x, exactly. This needs to be x, sorry. You probably saw that. All right, but it works. We can now move our objects. Of course, this is a bit simple and maybe we wanna do something more fun, but now at least we have something moving around on the screen and it didn't even take that much. So that's awesome. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.